Hi, everybody. Advertising powers the free internet. And I'm here to talk to you about where content consumption is going and the drivers of innovation in advertising. All right. So the main drivers in advertising innovation are reach, frequency, and message. When we talk about reach, we talk about the ability to target the right user in the right context, but not just that, but be able to understand what it actually means to talk to that user. So have you been effective? Being able to measure the effectiveness of the advertisement that you've shown to that user. Frequency means understanding the consolidated audience across all the different channels in which that user consumes content. So I'm the same person, let's go back, I'm the same person on my phone, on my tablet, on my computer, and being able to understand that is a huge part of frequency. And finally, message means understanding your audience, understanding how to speak effectively to your audience with the right message at the right time, being able to understand how the context of what you're saying impacts the message that you're trying to communicate with your customer. So to move on, to reach in a little more detail, the, the innovation we've seen over the past few years has been, in the digital world, a dramatic shift from contract-based media transactions to what's called programmatic media. And programmatic media is, in effect, the real-time buying and selling of ads. So when you go to a website now, or when you go to a mobile app, it's not just a pre-programmed set of ads that are shown to you. There's a real-time auction where, based on an anonymous user ID, advertisers are able to calculate the effective utility of showing that ad to you based on statistical priors, based on your propensity to convert or buy a certain product, based on whatever demographic or arbitrary uh, anonymous information that that advertiser has to you. That, in turn, has shown a dramatic increase in the relevance of ads shown to consumers, the ability to actually show ads that are appropriate to the right context, to the right pattern of user behavior, which in turn allows a brand to speak more effectively to the customers that are appropriate consumers of its message. Frequency means understanding the user across all the different devices. So as you know, you are exposed to a brand's message in dozens of different channels. Some of those channels include the fact that the Mets play in City Field, and so every time you say City Field, that's a Citibank an ad in effect. The fact that you are exposed to phone ads and computer ads and tablet ads, so over the past few years, massive machine learning, data analysis, artificial intelligence has gone into understanding how a brand can actually consolidate the different messages effectively across all the different channels. And this is an area where, as we see more and more proliferation of content consumption across dozens and dozens of ever-increasing and new channels, especially with the complexities of mobile, this is going to be a huge area of investment. And finally, message. Message is what a, an advertiser actually says to its consumers, how it actually communicates with its consumers. So there's two different ideas that go on here. If you look at one of the major trends that's actually happening in digital advertising, it's the rise of adblock. And why is adblock happening? It's because ads have become, frankly, annoying to consumers. And why are they annoying to consumers? Well, it's because we're using a dogma that was invented 20 years ago, which is the banner ad. The banner ad is this annoying, high-impact ad. Oh, oh, that's great. Um, that sits on the side, and people actually don't really interact with that advertisement. So in turn, brands have had to have more flashing, more blinking, more intrusive ads, which ultimately users don't want. It's not great for the publisher's experience. It's not great for the user's experience. And in turn, it's not great for the advertiser. So that's been a really unfortunate and downward cycle. But the fact is, advertising is the currency that pays for the free internet. 
There has been no traction for a paid internet. It is simply not a thing. So in order for us to have a future of a, of a free internet, we need the right message. And the right message means the right way to communicate with a consumer. And so what that means is, if you talk to a publisher and you say, why don't you design the ideal layout, the ideal way to speak to your, to your customer, your user, and now you design whatever you think the right form of advertisement is, rather than having the ad dictated to you by the IAB, which is the Internet Advertising Bureau, based on standards that existed on the web 20 years ago, this shift towards publisher-designated advertising is what's called native advertisement. And we're seeing this being one of the most important drivers in the shift towards a sustainable model of advertising, meaning a model where advertisers can actually speak to consumers based on the quality of the message rather than flashing or blinking. And that's gonna change the way that advertisements work. Similarly, we're actually, when, when you consume content on ESPN versus when you consume content on how to be a, a website about how to be a better father, the message from the same brand in those two contexts to be effective to you is fundamentally different. And to understand that and to use the right message in the right context is an incredibly powerful tool. Similarly, the ads that you see at City Field are totally different from the ads that you see on your cell phone. And so being able to speak to the right consumer, understanding your relationship is an area where brands are investing heavily. So if you think about the complexity of modern advertising, when you're a big international brand like Procter & Gamble, you have all these different channels. And each channel exhibits its own pros and cons and outcomes. So think about out of home. If you're a brand considering whether or not to invest in billboards in an airport, or you're considering whether or not to buy a magazine ad, or whether or not to buy that TV spot, there are so many different channels for you to think about. Now, how do you know, given the media mix that you are choosing, if that's the optimal media mix, or if any particular channel has, in fact, been effective. And it's compounded by the fact that there's ever more channels and that they don't speak to each other. There's no way to independently verify if an ad in a newspaper has been the singularly most impactful ad relative to paying an advertiser or paying an actor in a movie to drink your soda or, or whatever. So understanding the complexity here is a major driver of where we see innovation. So when we look at the future, we understand that this complexity exists for advertisers. And so understanding how to maximize ROI in a really provable way is where we see advertisement going. So when you think about Procter & Gamble or even smaller brands, if you're able to, from a reach perspective, show that brand conclusive evidence of the fact that the ads that you showed worked. So if you're able to use direct response data or you're able to use anonymous data or credit card data or in Facebook's case, individual login data to actually show bona fide lift, if you're able to show that for every dollar you spend on advertisement, you make 10 cents more you make a dollar and 10, that advertiser, even if hypothetically they could make 20 cents on billboards, they won't know that as a fact. So they are more likely to invest where they can actually discern the real returns. And when you look at the value, when you look at how a CMO is judged, ultimately a CMO is judged on the impact on sales. That's it. You know, the, the point of advertising is to ultimately, either this year or next year or eventually, increase sales for the brand. And that CMO needs to understand and maximize the utility of every single dollar that they spend. And so that CMO is going to push for ever more trackable and really addressable media. And that's where we see a lot of the innovation going. So when you think about actual effective advertising, you think of helpful, relevant, and ads that actually enhance the user experience. The canonical example here, of course, is Google. So the Google search result page, you may not even realize, but it's like 60% ads. But most people don't even care, because those ads are so helpful to the user journey. 
Google results are in the user funnel, the user conversion funnel, which basically talks about how a user goes on its journey to buy a product. So a user can be really high in the funnel, and they may not even be in market. So if you think about a user buying a car, they may not even be buying a car at all. So then an advertiser needs to talk to them simply about the value of that brand and get them to understand that that brand exists. When they get in market, then you need to talk to them about why the type of car that you want to sell them is better than any other car. The SUV is better. Then you need to tell them that the Ford SUV is better than the Toyota SUV. So based on where the user is in the conversion funnel, different forms of advertising are more effective. Google tends to get people really low in the conversion funnel. They've expressed interest in a product, shoes. That user wants shoes. So very low in the conversion funnel, meaning near a purchase. So showing purchasable items based on Google's knowledge of that user and its various demographics and other things that it can do to optimize the sorts of assets that it shows that user, that's a great ad. And that's why so many people actually enjoy Google Ads. So then when you think about the future of content consumption, you need to think about the different areas where consumers ultimately consume content because that's where advertising is going. You need to create great ads that optimize on reach, frequency, and message for every new channel where a consumer consumes content and where you're actually creating relevant, helpful ads that are conducive to the user experience. And so then when we think ahead, nobody actually knows where content consumption is going. But we have a good idea. We know messaging is just starting to take off in a, in a real way. Now, messaging, you can't just slap ads on there the same way you've done with every other medium. You need to do something that's right. So we've seen a tremendous growth in the digital advertising ecosystem, understanding and optimizing the ability to show and understand a, a user's mindset and show the right ad for the right user given their mindset. And we're going to see a huge investment in artificial, inv artificial intelligence that's actually able to understand where the user is in the conversion funnel, their interest in various products, and be able to actually converse with them in a way that shows them high quality, relevant information that's helpful to the user experience, and in a way that's actually part of and conducive to the experience that the publisher, in this case a messaging app, is actually trying to have the user experience. When you think about virtual reality, which who knows if that's going to take off, but it seems cool, it's probably 10, 5 years from now. But ultimately, think about what is going to be effective there. Brands are going to want reach. They're going to want to be able to actually target the right users in the right context. They're going to want to be able to understand exactly what that user is experiencing. And they're going to want to be able to actually track how effective the ads that they've been able to show are. They're going to want to be able to understand how that user is seeing ads relative to, use to, to that same user on a, on a cell phone and on the dozens of other devices that may or may not exist, like the watch or something else. And they're going to want to actually be able to speak to the user with a helpful, effective message. So who knows what the actual content consumption is going to be in virtual reality, but these are the drivers of where people are going. If you think about television, what's going to make television ads more effective? It's going to be targeting the right user in the right context. And that means we're going to see a lot of innovation with addressable TV, making TV more targetable, having users understand exactly, or having brands understand the best way to communicate with, with their customers in an effective way. And we're actually really excited because what this means is every user is going to see more and more effective ads. The problem of ads in the past, of annoying ads that are irrelevant to you, are, are a fact that's resulted because of poor reach, poor targeting, poor effectiveness, and this is increasingly going to be a bygone era. So we're excited to, walk, to work with you guys in the future of advertising. Thank you very much.